Hi, Micropunter here. Well, it's Halloween and Halloween time is pumpkin time, of course. And for this reason, I'm gonna put this pumpkin under the microscope. Well, but before that, I'm gonna cook some pumpkin soup first. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Well, let's start out first by cutting the pumpkin and then you're going to boil it uh, with uh, salt. That's very important. Usually I also add some curry um, and you can add any spices uh, that you'd like. And of course you have to remove the seeds as well. I mean, I just realized this is not supposed to be a cooking show, right? <laughs> what a mess, what a mess. I think I have to clean everything up here. And here I'm just boiling it. Well, and just to be totally clear, I'm not just simply cooking here. This is called specimen preparation because I also want to put some of the soup under the microscope, of course. Well, this is what I call a homogenizer. Some people also refer to this uh, simply as a mixer. And I'm going to use that uh, to rip apart the cells of the pumpkin. Well, and I like to eat uh, pumpkin soup with a little bit of sour cream and some pumpkin seed oil. Mm, it's a good soup, but I'm not gonna eat it just yet. Uh, first of all, a small drop on the microscope slide, cover glass on top, and then everything goes under the microscope. Let's see what I can find. Well, of course, what did you expect? Cells, lots of cells, millions of cells. But then I saw this strange, long, dark structure and I zoomed in a little bit and wow, Ah, that seems to be xylem. These are the vessels that transport water in the plant. I was really happy to have found that. Uh, these are very long tubes and they are reinforced. This means they have rings in the cell walls so that uh, they become stronger this way. Well, and so that we can imagine a little bit better how uh, these things look like, these vessel elements look like, I have made uh, some plastic molds here. In one case, you can see uh, the reinforcements are spiral, um, and in, inside here in the tube, you can actually, um, yeah, have to you have the water flow in, inside these tubes. And other um, the vessel elements, uh, the rings are in parallel. In this case, I used rubber bands to illustrate this here. Well, and here they are yet again at a slightly larger magnification. I'm focusing back and forth now. And these tubes, they can be very long. And uh, also pumpkins, of course, they contain a lot of water. So these tubes are important for supplying not only the pumpkin itself, but also all of the other parts of the plant, the leaves and so on with water. As a matter of fact, uh, plants uh, that invented these, the flowering plants that invented these many, many years ago, this was one of the reasons why they got so successful is because they could all of a sudden transport water inside them in these tubes uh, over a long distance. This allowed them to also grow in areas where there is actually not so much water available because the roots were able to absorb the water and carry them to all other parts of the plant. Okay, well, now let's look at a few other cells that I found in my pumpkin soup. And now back uh, to the cells again, and there are of course many of them. And now when you eat a whole bowl of soup, well, I don't know how many you eat, uh, billions and billions and billions of them. All of them basically were once alive, now they're all dead because I boiled them but in any case, they're still quite nicely visible. Um, of course, you are not able to see any movement here because everything has been killed off during the boiling process. You can also see that uh, some of the cells uh, they also have uh, an, a pigment in them. So this seems to be the thing that gives the pumpkin the color, the orange color. Yeah, and that is one of the cells enlarged. And there is a little bit of movement around the cell, but these are just cell fragments and uh, parts of other dead cells that are simply floating around in the water. But uh, there is no movement going on in the cell, unfortunately. So I tried something different. And now I tried to take a raw piece of pumpkin and I scratched some of the material off. And here, what we see is starch. Many, 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 many starch grains. These are these round structures of 
different sizes, large ones and small ones. And those starch grains um, are there because they store the glucose. They store the glucose of the, pump, uh, of the pumpkin. So glucose itself is con first converted to starch and then the starch grains are the form how the cells store them. And for us humans, that's good because that's the reason why when we eat uh, pumpkins, why we get energy because these starch grains, they also provide us uh, with uh, glucose as well. Now I'm zooming out a little bit and wow, what's happening here? Well, I placed the starch grains between polarizing filters. And because these starch grains are polarizing, they're a little bit crystalline in structure, therefore they start to light up on a dark background. And when you turn the polarizing filter again, then you can see that the background becomes light again. So th this is something that I like doing quite a lot. Uh, there are also many other structures that are polarizing. And simply by placing the microscope slide between these filters, you can make their appearance change quite a bit. Uh, and there are a lot of starch grains here. So many of them that you actually cannot even see them individually anymore. Yeah, and we're back here in the regular bright field. Cooking of plant material for microscopy is actually a well-known and a common way to make the specimen and to make the tissue soft and it's called heat maceration. So when I made uh, the pumpkin soup actually what I've done is I've prepared of course uh, the specimen in such a way that uh, it was able to become sufficiently thin to be observed under the microscope slide. And the mixer that I used to uh, make the soup actually it did not spin sufficiently fast to break many of the cells apart themselves. It only separated the cells, but the cells, they remained largely intact. And, but still, it's important when you do that, that, uh, I, that you keep the mixing time so reasonably short. So I did not uh, yeah, spend minutes mixing it, but only a few seconds, because I wanted to see as many intact cells as possible. So this is it. And before you click away, please do check out my Instagram channel, because uh, there I will be uploading uh, pictures uh, from uh, the stereo microscope that I have and uh, it allows you I want to yeah give you the possibility now to guess the things uh, of the objects that I'm showing you there uh, so it is a little bit uh, of a puzzle that I'm going to be presenting to you on regular yeah every couple of days in any case uh, wish you all the best happy micro hunting as always uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked it and uh, see you around next time bye bye